Hello, so uh, today I'd just like to run through the setup for uh, the Toon Shader that I use in um, my animations. Uh, so I'm going to try and take you through the steps. Uh, so I'm going to just uh, run it onto this basic sphere here. I've got set up just with smooth faces. Um, I'm running this in Eevee. So I'm going to create a new shader. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, get rid of the principled BSDF. Uh, and we're going to um, create the basic mix shader in which we're going to run uh, diffuse and a glossy. Let me just put a plug in. So this is very much a sort of uh, classic sort of old school shader setup for Blender. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is in here, I'm going to put in a layer weight and take the facing from that, which essentially is going to allow us to control um, the Fresnel effect. Uh, and this is going to be used uh, later on to control the highlights and shadows. Okay, from that point on, what we need to do is basically uh, do the, the main trick for creating a Toon Shader, which is uh, to use the shader to RGB. Uh, so let's type in shader to RGB. So there we go. Plug that in there. And we're going to run that through a color ramp. So the trick here is that the shader to RGB um, converts the color to RGB. And then what we need to do is set the color ramp to constant and crush these colors until we get a hard edge. So somewhere around here is good. Um, now the problem is when we make this into an actual shader, when we group all these together um, and take the outputs, we can't control this color ramp. Um, so you want to set a sort of a rough setting, but this is where things like the Fresnel, um, sorry, the, the layer weight enable us to actually have some control over this setting. Um, so you need to find a sort of a comfortable point here, um, but then you can do fine controls using the layer weight here. Uh, so that's the first part, that part controls the shadows. What we then want to do Let's take this glossy, and we're also going to run that into a shader to RGB. So we're going to duplicate the shader to RGB. We're going to duplicate the color ramp. We're going to take the glossy output, run it into the shader to RGB, and take the color from that and run it into this color ramp here. OK, so now what we need to do is take these two elements. The top element is mostly uh, concerned with the shadows. The bottom element is concerned with the highlights and combine those. So we're now going to add in color mix, mix RGB. And we're going to set this one to multiply. And what this is basically going to do is it's going to multiply our shadow with the color that we've got incoming. And this color we can um, input an image texture um, or just an RGB color. Okay, so what we want to do here is plug this color ramp into the bottom, and you can see our color can come on top here. Now, the factor is going to control the intensity of that shadow and how it mixes with that color. So, if we take this as a red color, you see we can either get a shadow that sort of uh, matches up to the color of the original object or we can um, go to a very dark shadow here okay so we also now need to mix in the highlight and the way we're going to do that is duplicate um, this color mixer we're going to again run the color in this is going to go into the bottom slots here again we take the color from here so um, eventually we will plug both of these color factors 
into either an image texture or a shared RGB color. And we want to set this one to screen. And the reason we say, if I can find screen, and if we plug this in, we can see that instead this acts as our highlight, so now we have control of the highlight color. Um, so the highlight intensity, again, set the slider here. Um, And we can control the relative size of this by changing the glossy. Okay, so we've got these two elements. We've got the highlight, we've got the shadow. And now what we need to do is just put in another mix RGB to recombine those elements together. So we're going to take the multiply, uh, sorry, the multiply output here, the screen output here, plug them in together, set that to mix. And as you can see now, by changing the factor here, we can change the extent to which those aspects mix together. So that works as a shader. And obviously, you could just change the colors here. You could plug in um, your elements. But in order to make it into a um, shader that we can sort of use multiple times and not have to recreate this, uh, we can group this. Uh, so. Um, if I can remember what to do here. <laughs> so we're going to make all of these aspects a group using make group. So we've got a group output here, which when we tab back out, just runs into the material output. If we tab back into the group, we can see all the inputs that we need over here. So there's a couple of things we need to do. Uh, first of all, we're going to plug in the color. So we take the color um, to the multiply and also into the screen. And that'll be a shared color. So that basically makes sure that uh, any image texture we've got coming in sort of mixes um, the highlight and the shadow and then recombines them. And it's the same file. Um, we're then going to take uh, this aspect, which is the factor here for the shadow intensity and plug that in. This factor here, which is the highlight intensity, we'll plug that in. We can then take uh, the roughness, which is going to come from the glossy, which, uh, as you remember, controls the highlight size. And we can take the layer weight blend factor, which controls the shadow size. Let's just make sure. And then we've got the final aspect, which is this balance, which enables us to balance the relative intensity of each. So plug that in over there. Uh, so then we can go through and name all of these individual aspects, but we'll just leave this as it is at the moment. The other thing that you want to do is plug in the normals from each of these outputs. Input, sorry. And there we go. And so here we have our node group. So as I said, we've got our shadow, uh, shadow intensity, highlight intensity, highlight size and general roughness relates to the glossy. the relative blend um, between the two. And the highlight, which comes from the um, layer weight factor. Sorry, the shadow from the layer weight factor. And that's it. And then we can take that and apply it to other objects. So let's just select this object. see here we can play with these factors obviously if you need to tweak these you can go back into this node group uh, you might want to play around with the color ramps just to make sure that the sort of the highlights are working for you and the shadows are working for you um, 
and that you've got enough fine control but once this is used you can reuse this node group over and over for different colors um, different textures and there we go